Hey YouTube, good morning. And good morning to the University of Florida Master Beekeeper Program. This is just gonna be a short video, uh, which is actually a, a requirement fulfillment for one of the levels in the Master Beekeeper Program in Florida. It's a simple, practical demonstration of honey extraction uh, here in the apiary. Um, following this rubric, uh, which is part of the guide and very simple steps and very methodical uh, explanation of what I'll be doing and I'll be uh, meeting those requirements. But I figured I would put this video on YouTube because it also has some very uh, helpful tips uh, for beekeepers um, that I think fits in the, in the um, methodology of my channel and the intent of my channel here in Jacksonville, Florida, Zone 9A. Uh, and those of you that are following my videos know that that's the purpose here is for local beekeepers to have some local information that they can use and watch in their area as they uh, take their beekeeping journey. A few descriptions of what I've got set up here uh, and then we'll get into the process. Uh, I use a gorilla cart um, with an empty box. Uh, that has a bottom board on it and a lid on top of it. So when I go through the hives pulling honey, I have a place to put the honey um, that I'm going to extract because not every single frame uh, in these hives is ready to come out. Um, and of course, you know, one of the things to look for uh, is at least 75% of the capped honey, uh, honey in a frame to be capped in order for the honey to be ripe. So that's kind of the methodology. And of course the brush and the hive tool and the smoker is lit. Uh, and it's uh, kind of in the morning here, which makes for a nice time of day to do this. The bees are usually in a pretty good mood. Um, I do want to talk about the honey flow. Um, it is the 28th of October, and uh, my broodminder scales uh, are showing a slight nectar flow. They're still adding resources. Maybe I'll put a picture right about here showing the uh, hive scales uh, this morning, and you can see the slight uptrend. So they are still bringing it in. So my intent here is to not completely take off all of the food, but to take off the capped honey uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, and also leave food on the hives for them to continue um, to bring in during this nectar flow. And uh, you know, you can always leave honey on the hive for the bees to feed if you're not gonna be feeding uh, supplemental with sugar water. Okay, so that's the setup. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set the camera up on a tripod probably so you can just kind of watch from afar how I do it. And then I will uh, kind of narrate you through that. Okay, another thing I wanna mention is about uh, equipment here. Um, you know, you may be a beekeeper that likes to kind of walk around the apiary uh, without gear on, uh, perhaps doesn't use gloves. And I typically don't have my hood. I typically wear my jacket, my hood down and no gloves is typically how I work in my apiary when I'm doing checks. When you're taking honey off the hive, um, it's going to be a little bit different. You're going to be upsetting the bees. You're going to be kind of taking away their resources and they're more than likely going to be a little bit defensive about taking their honey. Uh, so go ahead and suit up ahead of time. I wear these white um, latex gloves. They're pretty thin. Uh, the stings do go through them, but it helps me be a little bit better. One thing I do want to comment, if you wear those black thick seven mil nitrile gloves, while they do help prevent stings a little bit more than a thinner glove, that black will attract the bees. Um, black is a color that bees go to. So while you may be achieving one objective, you may be uh, fighting another one. So light colored gloves, blue is better than black, white is better than blue in my experience if you're gonna wear the, the, the plastic gloves. Um, so these hives with only one single, I'm expecting probably not to end up taking any honey just because I don't think that they will have built up much, but we'll also use this as an opportunity to go through the apiary and just do a quick check, uh, maybe pop out a frame or two. Um, when we get over to these ones with doubles, uh, I think I've got a little bit more honey to pull. Um, come along with me. Yep, just light storing nectar, nothing capped in this one. Same here, a little bit more though. Nectar, no caps, uh, very good. Um, expectation of what I thought there. Putting on weight, plenty of food for them, which is a discussion I'm gonna have all the way through this as that's one of the rubric requirements to talk about my feeding plan. The nectar in this super is feeding the bees. If I take, end up taking that nectar, I'll need to supplemental feed in the bottom. Okay, getting on to the larger double here. If I re remember right, I might have, under supered this one, which means I put the cap on top. Maybe not, I can't remember. Maybe it was the other one. Yeah. Yep, just drawn comb, slight nectar. Very light box, a little bit of nectar.
Okay, this is capped honey. Both sides. A little bit of open comb on the end, but more than 75% of the comb is capped. Uh, and a few, the bees really aren't even covering it. So this is an example of the type of frame. I go ahead and brush the bees off. If there are a lot of bees, I brush them into the hive. But if they're just a few bees, you can just brush them off. And then this one frame, after the bees are gone, comes down into my empty box that's just waiting and keep the lid nice and tight so robbing doesn't happen. If this entire box were full, uh, I'm gonna take them out one by one and move them into the other one. It's not quite as efficient that a commercial beekeeper might not do. So this is 50% and on the other side not. So this is the type of frame you do not want to extract because it's not ready yet. Um, this will stay in the hive. I'm gonna kinda go to the outside edge. And when you start in the middle and work to the outside edges, typically you're gonna get less and less honey, typically. So I'm gonna go ahead and, now here's 100% almost. Well, about 85 to 90, 90% capped honey. Bee brush is one technique to remove bees. With a lot of bees, you can use a, a blower. Blowers can be a little bit more violent. A gentle bee brush is the most historic and traditional method, but it is individualized. Um, while I'm pulling this honey, I can keep talking. Bee escapes are another way you can get bees out of your hives if you have a lot of them. Okay, we're done with this one. See how spotty that is? So they're actually probably starting to eat some of this, or they ate some of it during the dearth. Typically, they don't cap like that. They cap in, in groups. So this was probably previously capped. They started eating it, and now they're refilling it during this flow. So, one important thing to think about here is this space I just pulled out needs to be refilled. And this time of year, if I were to put foundation in here, that would probably just get unused. So I need three frames of beekeeper's magic. And beekeeper's magic is drawn comb. So these are frames from previously, got a little lizard on there. My little guy. Previously used and extracted frames. These are the best type of frames to put inside of a hive that, now see this one, um, I even put some wax on it because it needs to be further drawn out on this side. So I've given them a little bit of a head start. Um, this one probably won't get drawn out till the spring though, but my comb is now full. There's still nectar in here and there's nectar in this second box. I'm only gonna store this second super on here for the purposes of keeping all that nectar together. Uh, consolidating and getting uh, the, down to one frame for food is probably gonna happen uh, later in the season. All right. So three frames out of that one. Keep on going. Probably gonna just get a few more here out of this single. Let's see what it looks like. Yep, nothing in here. Let me just take a check down below and make sure the population is okay on this one. Yeah, the bees look great. Matter of fact, if I look down in here, I can see capped honey. So they're just filling up this uh, bottom, uh, which is exactly what they need to do for winter. They're even putting honey over here in the drone comb frame I have. So this is very light and probably will not even get used this year. This small single is keeping itself plumbed up at the bottom just for winter, which is exactly what they should be doing. Um, not knowing the strength of the nectar flow, I have supers on here in case they get enough honey in order to build some excess, but it's looking like just these doubles are going to have the excess that we're talking about today. Yep, same here. Drawn comb, a little bit of nectar. Take a peek at the bees. Looking good. Lots of bees. 
the scales are giving me either the fact of putting on weight on this hive. If you notice, this hive has a broodminder scale on it so I can keep track of its consumption and addition of weight very, very easily. I have numbers under here. This is hive number five and that's how I know what hive has what. All right, back into another double. I'm gonna move the camera a little closer. All right. Look how this hive has propolized this screen up. They don't like the upper ventilation like some of the other hives do. Can't remember if I... Okay, we're back into capped honey here. Another one. This one is right about, it's definitely more than 75. So this one is getting the bee brush. A little bit higher up here. Might want to just kind of brush these guys on the entrance so I don't reach too far. Sometimes you can just use your bee brush. This is borderline. Mostly capped on this side. Now, this is actually a frame you could extract. And this is why. While there is not 100% exposure on this comb, there is about 90% exposure filled of the cells in the frame. So that, is, that meets the requirement of ripe honey because this does not even have any nectar in it or comb, but all of the comb they have drawn, they have capped honey in. So this is an example of one you could extract, but might not represent full coverage of the comb. Yep, nice. This is a nine frame. And if you see how thick they've built that up, they build it a little thicker in some of these uh, nine frame supers than they do in 10 frame supers. Getting a little spotty on this side. That spotty tells me they probably were starting to eat some of that. And if I'm looking, there's no nectar in those cells. So this, does not have the risk of having any nectar in it either. This one's a little light. That one was on the edge. You see how it doesn't uh, have any cappings. And then here, like a spotty cap here too. So this one's gonna go back in the middle, towards the middle for them to build this out a little bit more. Now they're one-sided, the other side is not. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in the middle. Probably not gonna get any more because I'm going, well, no, I got one here. I didn't think so. So there's just a little bit of nectar out here. This is good coverage. I could extract this one only because I don't see any nectar in the cells that are not capped. So they started eating this one. So this is good coverage of the cells that are capped again. This one feels really, really light. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this one in there for them. Same thing with this one, leaving it in there for them. Putting the ones that I left that are partial in the center. Adding some more drawn comb. So they don't build up any burr comb. see what they've got in this second one. Okay, nice drawn comb, a little bit of nectar, but all my, I had under supered this one. Under supering is when you put 
the uh, comb to be filled closer to the hive. So as the bees come up, they only have to fill this one and the top one had all of the drawn comb on it. Yep, so this is a nectar super. Plenty of food here for these bees. Food is in here, food's on the edges of here, and food is in the top center of this one, and they're putting nectar in here. So plenty of food for these bees. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do not expect any in this hive, mostly because I've been tracking the health of this hive and it's just been a little bit weaker. So I'm gonna double check down here that they're doing okay. Bees just working the wax. No honey. Probably don't even need the super on this one, but I'm leaving, leaving it there for storage and cleanliness of the bees. Oh, bee population looked great. Full 10 frame of bees, and I can see uh, capped honey on the top edges here. So I'm, I don't even need to crack this open. I'll leave my excluder on. The health of this hive is great. But they're not making super honey. They're just building themselves up in the hive for winter. All right, let's go to the other side. Just got a couple more to show you. Might get a little bit on some of these, but we'll see. I do have a pollen trap on this one. You can see down here, and currently the pollen trap is open for the bees to come and go without me collecting their pollen. You can open and close those. I see the pollen, uh, the population up here up top. And this, because this only has one super on it, this is probably gonna be middle of the road, just by the bee population and what they're working. A lot more bees up here working, but in the center, just a little bit of nectar. See that? Some capped. So they're storing. This is that flow that's, uh, keeping this hive going. I'm just gonna show you a couple of these, not taking any of them. Heavy with nectar, even a little bit of capped. Staying in here for the bees and let them finish it out <laughs> or overwinter with it. This is, a, this is a good example of a frame I probably should pull because it needs a little bit of extra wax. Um, they will really not fill this in, especially if there's no nectar flow on. Um, and. If I have a frame with some extra wax on it, that would be a better thing to do. And see, I've already taken care of this one. So this is drawn, but here I've already put wax up here so they can more easily build that out in the spring. Okay, not taking any honey off of this one. Tighten my frames up. Last one, not expect, kind of gonna be the same thing on this one, I think, just by the activity down here below. Sometimes you can just tell they're building this double, do, double deep up, not stacking, yep. Couple bees up here, up top, work on the wax. Check the bees. This is probably where all of this flows honey is going. And it is. So for purposes, I'm gonna show you where the wax, where the honey is going in a double deep. I'm not extracting, if I do, we'll see. Usually there's a combination of brood, yeah. Brood and honey here, even still got some drones. Looking for the queen just to make sure before I show you. This is how they uh, make a frame. Uh, inside of a double deep. The food goes up on top of the brood and the brood goes in the middle so they don't have to go very far to feed the young. Um, that's what you would expect inside of the deep super. The further towards the edge, the less brood you should find. And there's the queen, just to show you. You see her? She was on the far end frame on the second super. Red uh, dotted queen that made was this year. 
pure honey frame. Now, because I didn't catch that queen, I'm gonna put my eyes on her so I know exactly where she is. So if I put the frame back in here, I do not squish that queen. Little bonus there. Got to see the queen in the second half of a super, which means she's probably laying up top. And this is just for storage. And that's where we are. So definitely a little bit of a flow going on because it was definitely nectar in the cells that was open. Not a lot of capped honey, but I, I, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the purpose of this video was to, uh, you know, demonstrate the extraction, the brushing, which caps are ripe and, and uh, the like. Let me get this. Okay, let me show you where we finished up. So here was that super. Look, there's no bees robbing at all. We got two, four, six, eight frames of capped honey. That's not a lot, but for the purpose of this demonstration, using the extractor, that's what I wanted you to see. There are no bees on there. It's safe to take inside. Let me show you what's next. Hey beekeepers, let me show you something about what an observation hive can also do for managing the flow. Capped honey. See, it's all capped up here. But down in this frame right here, can you see the glistening nectar? That is a sign of a flow or your supplemental feeding like through an open feeder and they're bringing in sugar water. I'm not supplemental feeding right now. So all of this glistening in here is nectar that is being stored. Um, and that's a good indication of a flow. When that starts to slow down or they start to cap that honey, just like it is up top, the flow is kind of ending. Um, just another clue when they're working those frames that the flow is currently on. Not many days left here in Florida, but that's what we see right now. Okay, beekeepers, we're inside the honey house. Now, I'm just gonna walk you through the equipment we have here. I've got it kind of all set up in a little bit more of a crowded area than I normally do. Normally I spread out a little bit more, but so you can see it. Uh, this is a mechanical extraction method. Method. So this is using a stainless steel Maxent uh, extractor. It basically has a basket in here that spins the honey out and it comes out the hole. This has got a motor. There are some with hand cranks. Uh, this one holds two, four, six frames uh, of the medium frames or it holds three deep frames and we all extracted mediums today. This is another tool you need or some form. This is a double sieve. This is what takes all the wax and the bees legs and the pollen or perhaps even small high beetles or anything that's gonna be in these frames uh, that's gonna get spun out. What comes out of here is a very, very clean honey. A little bit of particulate matter gets through but that will also float to the top. So you need some sort of a sieve on top of your bucket. And of course a bucket down here is the other part. I use these little wooden blocks just to get my sieve a little closer to the actual bucket. Uh, and that's what that is. So let me just show you how I set that up. Excuse me bending over, but that's it. So now the double sieve is underneath the hole and we're ready to go. It's plugged in and you just turn the motor on with a little uh, knob there like that. Now, other tools, scratchers, capping scratchers and uh, perforation tools. These are for getting the parts of the wax that, um, that you can't get with the knife. And we've got a few frames that that will definitely be a part of. Now this is a tool I'm not gonna use today because this is when I, I use this tool when I'm extracting a lot. This is a plain uncapper. It's got a heating element on here. You plug it in and it essentially melts and cuts the wax um, as you pull it down the frame. I'm not using this today because of the number of frames we're extracting, but just another tool uh, you can purchase to perhaps make a, a lot of extraction quicker and easier. Now I'm doing a little bit more tried and true method, a bread knife that is soaking in water that was just boiled. So it's boiling water. So the knife has a little bit of heat to it. Um, I like to have a rag to keep my fingers clean, uh, to wipe off anything. And yes, I would like to talk about clean cleanliness a little bit. If you are a commercial honey producer, you have certain kitchen requirements that you need to learn in your local area and your laws about. Uh, I am a private uh, seller here. I sell out of my yard. I don't have any sort of uh, kitchen requirements for reselling because I do not have to meet food loss within the state as far as having a kitchen. So I am allowed to use my own location here. I obviously like to keep it as clean as possible. So I've cleaned out my stainless steel. I've wiped everything down. I've even used a little bit of a, an, an air to make sure there's no dust or anything inside of the equipment that's taking the honey out. Obviously, if there are large particles or anything like that, the sieve is gonna do that and things will also float to the top of your honey bucket. So you have a lot of things going for you on keeping your honey clean. 
So that are the basic tools for the mechanical extraction. Now let's get into uncapping some honey. Okay, uh, I would like to say that even inside your honey house, it's probably best to have your, your, um, your, your lids and things on it because if, there are gonna be a few bees that will get inside of your house. Uh, so just kind of keep them. So this is one of the frames we had on top of, now this is um, a bucket I didn't describe yet. This is essentially a uncapping bucket. You can use anything for this, but the way this is designed is it's got a mesh on the bottom for honey to go through and a bucket on the bottom that uh, ex excess honey will drip into um, and go down to the bottom. But for the purposes of this, I like to keep all my tools out and available and you set the frame on top of this little crossbar so you can cut straight in. Now let me just show you how easy a hot knife and a bread knife will just cut these cappings off. And that is how you do it. And that goes down there and drips. Now you see you have a few cells here we've still got to clean up and I'll show you that here in a little bit. Remember this is one of those frames with less than 75% capped but these cells are all empty. There is no nectar in them. So we talked about that, why we're uncapping a frame that has perhaps so few cappings on it. It's because it's an older frame that has been eaten out a little bit, but there is no nectar in there. Okay, so we'll set our knife back in there. And here's where the capping scratcher comes in. You essentially go over the frame and look for the cells that did not get perforated and you just scratch them off. like that and make sure they're all done. And then you put the frame in the extractor and you need to kind of balance your extractor so that the weight of the frames is uh, evenly distributed. All right, we'll do one more and then we might do a little fast forwarding. Nice looking frame there. A little bit more uncapping, scratching to do here. A lot of the wax that you'll end up getting in your honey is from this part here, these cappings that turn into just kind of mush. They will float to the top or get caught in the sieve. Okay, that was two frames. I'm probably gonna fast forward the rest of them. Stick with me. Okay, I'm back. So, 
Six frames went in the extractor. Remember we had eight total frames. These two were uncapped and just ready to go. One important thing to remember is this is not wasted honey in here. This is just honey that's gonna have to gravity drain and is not gonna come out in the extractor. It's gonna go in this bottom bucket. You can save it and put it back in the bucket and run it through the sieve, or you can feed it to the bees. Uh, obviously there's gonna be a lot of wax in here. I usually let the honey drip down in here and then I let the bees go clean up this wax and they will clean it up till there's nothing left. It will obviously create a robbing scenario, so I would not refeed it to your bees anywhere near your apiary. Okay, last step here is the extraction process. Now I have, let me just kind of open this up so we can see a little bit better. A, this nice mat Macton extractor, and I have it mounted to a thick board down here that gives me some extra stability. Balance in the extractor is the important part. Some of these frames are heavier than others, so it's important to try to equalize the weight. Um, and start slow. So if you notice, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the extractor, but I'm just gonna get it to slowly start. And I'm kind of holding to make sure it's not gonna wobble too much. And once it starts, you can see it, it's fairly well balanced. There's a little bit of a wobble here, but as this honey starts to spin out and come out, it'll get lighter and lighter and lighter and you can crank up the volume. How long to let it spin like this is up to you. It depends on how dry you want your frames to be. I usually go about 20 minutes, but you can go longer, you can go a little bit less if you want them to be wet. I find that uh, you'll kind of get used to uh, using an extractor if you've never used one before. And if you can see down here, the honey is already starting to come out and it's going through the thick, thick sieve first. And I already see some wax flakes in there, which that sieve is doing its job there. And you go ahead and spin this out and I will let you guys watch this fast forwarded. Okay, beekeepers, we're finished. Those last few frames are uh, all dried up, but I just wanted to show you inside here. These are what the cappings look like when they're dripping. And down below, you can see the honey's going in here. And while uh, I've got the extractor tilting just to get the last little bit, there's our honey, and uh, looks like a just shy of probably around two gallons, which is about right. Normally I say a full super of good honey is about two and a half to three gallons. And we had eight frames. So just shy of two gallons is about right. That's what it looks like inside. Well, there you have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And uh, hopefully the uh, University of Florida Master Beekeeper program would consider this for my practical exam for the uh, honey extraction using mechanical methods. But just in summary, I'm gonna cover up a few things of what we do today that cover all of the requirements. Harvested ripe honey, 75% or more. And then the frames that did not have 75%, uh, they had no nectar in the cell. So obviously the honey was ripe. Remove the bees in a safe method, didn't hurt the bees. I used a bee brush. You can use other methods, uh, including um, the, the separation boards that have the one-way um, entrances on them. Um, bee brush is what we use today and put it in a separate box to avoid robbing. Um, we uncapped the honey. I used a knife. I showed you what a uh, capping scraper uh, heat uh, knife looks like. Um, and uh, we pulled off all of the cappings and used a scratcher to get all of the uh, uncapped parts that the knife didn't do uh, completed. Um, and then, you know, the honey that we left on the hives, if you remember, I didn't pull every single frame on there. So these hives are going to do just fine. They're still collecting a little bit of nectar right now, but they all have at least one super on them. And if I didn't, just for example, if I did take the entire super, the next strategy would be to make sure there's at least two frames in the bottom uh, box or add a supplemental feeder on top. And I do that through the winter with two to one syrup with supplemental feeders on all of my hives to ensure they go into winter um, completely full. And then 
justification of the method. I love using the mechanical extractor, but obviously extractors are a little bit expensive. And as a new beekeeper, that might not be the way you choose to extract honey. There are a lot of ways to extract honey. Most of them involve a little bit more work. You know, there's crush and strain, just letting it ooze out. Uh, but once you get to the point of owning an extractor, probably at the point where you own at least five to 10 hives is where you probably should look at that if you're getting a, a nice large extractor or a very small extractor. Uh, and sometimes you can save a little bit of money with a hand crank versus is a motor but if you are going the extractor route I wouldn't skimp I'd get the nice one uh, because usually people come around and then end up getting a nicer one later on down the line if they bought a cheaper one made perhaps in another country in any case that's my method that's the way I do it and hopefully you learned a little bit here thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you soon